Thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. Samsung's in a, say, a bit of a conundrum. Uh, on one hand, this particular one, uh, they make some of the most cutting edge phones on the market. The Z Flip and Z Fold are paving the way for the future smartphones, beating out like top guns like Apple and Google. On this one though, uh, their bread and butter, the Galaxy S line, isn't what it used to be. The S21 series showed a ish 20% drop in sales from the S20. And the S20 line showed a nearly 50% drop in sales from the S10 series that came before it. That's a giant year over year decline. But Samsung does seem to have a plan, uh, a way to bring back the Galaxy S series and do it with a bang. So this new S22 line, uh, at least according to the rumors, should be three phones placed in slightly different market positions. This strategy is interesting. Um, but will it work? And that's the question that we are talking about here. We all generally have, have love for Samsung, love for the tech, and want to see the line generally do well. And the S22 is very unique. So let's talk about it. So like I said, we are expecting three new phones. Not gonna surprise anybody the naming scheme, allegedly, according to rumors, S22, S22 Plus, S22 Ultra. And like the name suggests, it's a good, better, best model. We've seen that for years. The S22 Ultra, at least to me, looks to be one of the most interesting devices this year. But the thing that's more interesting than the actual hardware is how Samsung is going to position this phone. So Galaxy Note, in a lot of ways, catapulted Samsung to the top of the smartphone game. Uh, the Note was the first popular phone with a gigantic screen. It brought back the stylus. It was a productivity powerhouse. But those benefits very quickly became industry standard, and the Note was relegated to being the phone with the S Pen, rather than like that top of the line, cutting edge industry leader that it started out being. So unsurprisingly, Samsung essentially killed the Note line. Uh, the Note 20 and Note 20 Ultra were released back in 2020, and they were great phones. They just didn't do enough new to warrant needing an update in 2021, or even to keep the Note line around. And that's where the S22 Ultra comes in, why I think it's so interesting. So first, it appears the S Pen is coming to the Ultra, which is dope. Uh, this is the biggest upgrade we're expecting to see. There are a lot of people out there who love the S Pen. It's the reason they use Samsung phones. They've been clamoring for a new one. Uh, Samsung finally brought the S Pen to the fold, uh, and now it's coming to the Ultra, and it's gonna give sort of that option, obviously, to more people. Aside from that, though, the design is going to look Note-ish familiar. Very squared off design with a 6.8 inch display. Uh, Samsung like, is still the king of displays. I don't think that you can argue that at all and this generation looks to be no different. Uh, they're gonna be using the latest generation of LTPO displays, but the big selling feature, and again, all according to rumors, uh, is going to be brightness. Uh, we're expecting around 1750 nits of brightness. That's a lot, like a lot, a lot. It's 900 nits brighter than the S21 Ultra and 550 nits brighter than the iPhone 13 Pro display. This is a giant deal if true, and is going to make it the brightest display ever in a phone, at least as far as I could find in my research. So you pair that with 120 hertz variable refresh rate, poppy colors, as somebody who prioritizes display, sometimes over everything else, I'm here for it. So another big feature at the Ultra line has always uh, been, been cameras. When they first introduced the original Ultra, they went bonkers uh, with space zoom and a huge main sensor. And they've sort of pared that back in years past. So while this year that will all still be there, it's not gonna be that much different than the S21 Ultra, at least allegedly. It'll have the same 108 megapixel sensor, which is a lot of megapixels, the same telephoto and ultra wide. What's gonna be upgraded is processing. And Samsung's probably gonna do what every manufacturer is gonna be doing and be like, AI, AI to make adjustments, AI to make photos look better without needing new hardware, AI all the things. Uh, and as we've seen from especially uh, what Google's doing with the new Pixel, AI makes a big difference. So I'd expect that to make a giant difference here as well. One area where I think we're going to see a giant change though is not in stills, but in video recording. Uh, this phone, I imagine will be powered by the latest Snapdragon processor, which is the long-named Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 here in the US. Uh, 
and that alone brings a ton of camera updates. So you should expect things like better low light, higher frame rates. I had a chance to play with this processor a few months ago, uh, and if Samsung lets the processor do its thing for video, this should be incredible and should probably catapult it over video from what the iPhone is doing. The first time I think I can say that for Android. So I am pumped to see this. So on the performance side, the processor is not gonna be a giant power jump uh, over the 888. Processors are just so good these days that year over year updates are hard to notice in end usage experience. Uh, but you should get things like faster charging uh, and also you should get better battery life. And there's also a rumor, and this one is, out of all these rumors, a bigger grain of salt. Uh, fast charging should be up to 45 watts fast charging, which if you're paying attention, uh, is 20 watts faster than 25 watts we have right now. So big jump there. So before I keep going into S22, if you've been following the news uh, at all, you know, the past couple of years, uh, you've probably heard the word inflation. Uh, it is everywhere right now. Traditionally, you could Hedge your bet against inflation. That's why people went and invested in gold, sometimes stock markets, and more recently, things like uh, cryptocurrencies. So if you don't know, I didn't, the art market's valued at $1.7 trillion, which is like a lot of money. Uh, and Deloitte is estimating that it could grow by another 900 billion in the next four-ish years. And it's sort of been an asset that a lot of the great fortunes have held. You've probably, for example, you've probably heard of the Rockefeller family. They used their Boku bucks uh, to invest in art and eventually amass one of the greatest art collections in history, which in 2018 sold for $835 million. Now, that's a lot of money. I'm not Rockefeller. I'm guessing maybe you're not too. How can you and how can we invest in art when you don't have millions of dollars to buy like a Picasso, a Warhol, Banksy? all that kind of stuff. And that's where Masterworks actually comes into play. So their straight up mission is to make it possible for anyone to invest in great works of art through fractional shares. So with Masterworks, you can actually co-own exclusive pieces of art that help protect you from inflation, also just help your portfolio overall. And you can make a pretty good return on it. So uh, for example, uh, they returned 32% to investors in 2020 and 31% in 2021. If this sounds interesting to you, uh, you're not the only one. If you go to Masterworks website, there's a wait list uh, to get in. But if you use our link down below, you can skip the wait list and start researching and investing today if you want. One rumor that is galvanizing a lot of people uh, is when it comes to RAM and what RAM these phones are gonna have, whether it's some combination of six, eight, 12, whether it's gonna be less than the S21. Uh, these rumors are very, very conflicting. So until there's official announcement, uh, all reserve judgments, certainly it would be disappointing to see the amount of RAM go down uh, from one generation to the next, but I gotta assume at least give Samsung the benefit of the doubt that they know what they're doing and the end user experience will notice any difference if that does happen, uh, but certainly more RAM, the better. All right, so overall, I think this phone is feeling like a Note 22 rather than S22 Ultra, and that is a awesome thing. I got a soft spot in my heart for the Note. Uh, it's bringing all the top features of the S line and then throwing in like an S Pen on top of that. All right, so that is the Ultra. But like I said earlier, three phones uh, should be coming. Let's talk a bit about the other two, uh, and let's start with the S22. So if you if you remember, uh, the S21 was missing one key thing that the rest of the line had, uh, a glass back. For some reason that I have yet to figure out, uh, Samsung removed the glass back and replaced it with plastic. That seemed pretty inexcusable, and I think a lot of people agreed. So if this was a budget phone, that would make sense, but this was a flagship phone in their S line. Didn't seem to be much of a reason for that. It does appear that Samsung has learned and that both the S22 and S22 Plus will be bringing glass back. Uh, aside from that, the rest of the design shouldn't be changing too much, at least according to the leaks, and I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Uh, Samsung switched up the camera design with the last phone, so I think it makes sense to continue that here. That's usually what we see, you know, two years of one design, and then we switch it up. Um, and I think also that it lets the S22 Ultra be the, sort of the Ultra phone with its more unique uh, style design. If there was one change to design, it's not the way the phone looks, it's screen size, and usually phones get bigger it does appear that the S22 is going to get smaller. So bear with me. Uh, the S22 should be six inches instead of 6.2. And 
S22 Plus should be 6.5 instead of 6.7. So again, shrinking them down and I love my big phones, but like I'm not mad at things getting just a little bit smaller and a little more pocketable. Uh, those screen sizes are still plenty big. They give you the options you need. Smallish with the S22, big and big-ish uh, with the Plus or the Ultra. So the only other big update that we're expecting, according to the rumors again, is the main camera. Uh, the S21 series had a 12 megapixel main camera. We're now expecting a gigantic jump to 50 megapixels uh, on the main camera on the S22 and the S22 Plus. In addition, I almost said plus, it would've been confusing. Uh, we're expecting it to still have same telephoto, ultra wide and front facing cameras. Whether or not those cameras will have any updates yet to be seen, but like I said earlier, just AI everything. This new S22 series, the more I thought about it, it made sense. It kind of fixes some of the confusing things with all the Samsung phones. Before, if you had a Galaxy S line in various sizes and shapes, then you had the Note line, which was just the S with a pen. And then you had the Fold, which is the top of the line with the cutting edge tech. So you had to choose. Get the normal Galaxy S, which was solid, but you know wasn't anything gigantically different. Splurge for the Note, because you wanted the S Pen, or really splurge and break your bank for the Fold. It was, it was too much, it was a bit confusing. But I think Samsung now is getting back to basics. Get rid of the Note, and you've got two options. The S line, which is varying degrees of normal phones, and you've got the Fold line for the cutting edge. That makes sense. But even though this makes Samsung's phone line clear, at least to me, I'm not exactly sure it's going to say, save or resurrect the S line from sort of the trend they've been in the sales department. Uh, and there's a lot of reason for that. First price, at least according to rumors, is set to go up. And due to supply chain issues, it does appear the S22 will be $100 more across the board. So they're already probably gonna leave not the best taste in a lot of consumers' mouths. And the phone is not that different than last year's, but it does appear it's going to be a bit more expensive. So really it's gonna be an upgrade for those on older devices, sort of S10 and before. But unlike other OEMs, Samsung's already showed us what the future of phones is. In fact, you can already buy it. You've got the Z Flip and Z Fold. Uh, to me, are more exciting phones, no matter which way you, I guess, bend it. And because it's a phone you can already buy, it makes choosing the S-Line a lot harder, especially if the price is going up. Uh, other manufacturers are working on their own version of foldables, obviously, but they're not quite ready yet. So their normal phones are still the best that they offer. Think, think Google and Apple right now. Uh, Samsung has kind of backed themselves into uh, an odd corner. If the price had gone down or stayed the same, big differentiator there. But since the price is going up, and there's always discounts now on the Z Flip and the Z Fold. It's a bit harder of a sell, I think. And it puts the Galaxy S line in a predicament. Uh, and I don't know if the S22 is gonna be able to save it. I guess sales numbers will tell a picture. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Overall, Samsung devices though, are in a strong position. So as a company, Samsung's gonna be absolutely fine. Um, but the line of phones that got them there might need some more changes in the future. The S22 series, regardless, looks like it's gonna be here sometime soon. And regardless of what I think, all of our questions will be answered. And you get a chance to decide whether or not you wanna get one with the best tool you have, your wallet.